Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to do a quick introduction to function calling with the OpenAI APIs. So this will be a brief overview of what function calling is and the motivation behind it. And also we're going to go through some code examples as well and how to use this function calling feature using the OpenAI APIs. OpenAI function calling helps to more reliably connect these GPT models with external tools and APIs. So you can think of it as we have these large language models, which can be the GPT-4, GPT-3 models that you want to integrate with external tools. It could be an API, it could be a search API, it could be a knowledge base, whatever that may be. An effective way to do that is to leverage the tool usage capabilities of these models or use this feature called function calling, which basically is an interface in addition to what we already can do with these language models to specify what functions you are using, interested in using, and also what are the type of outputs that you'll be expecting from these functions. So what you do with function calling is you define functions. These functions are your tools, and you basically prompt these models with uh, define function and the properties of this function. And once you provide that information and context to the models via the prompts, the model will send back a structured output. And this structured output is gonna contain uh, specific parameters or properties that are expected by this function. And so it all depends on what the function will do. Function calling also helps improve reliability and to reduce hallucination issues. You can use function calling also to structure outputs and it can help you to convert natural language in an automatic way into API calls or database queries. So let's say you were building an application and in this application, maybe some type of like agentic workflow and this agent interacts with, let's say an API, you know, how do you actually get those API calls in an automatic way? Well, you can use function calling. You basically provide again, the you define the tooling for the model and the model converts any natural language into proper and correct API calls, or valid API calls. And this could be also again, database queries as well. It also helps to convert unstructured data to structured data. So it could be structured outputs as well. You can also build complex conversational agents. So one very neat feature from the OpenAI APIs is that you can call the model with these functions that you have defined, then the API returns to you these parameters, these properties, which you could use to call, let's say, an external API. And then once you have that information from external API, you can feed that back right to your conversational agent via the APIs. So basically it provides that external additional information that your agent can utilize to, let's say, have a conversation and to provide more information from user requests. So that's a bit of a summary of function calling. Now let's go into some examples and how to use function calling via the OpenAI APIs. So the first thing you need to do, obviously you need to import your libraries. I will not go through each one of these. You can install these yourself and you can also set up an API key, which you will need, and you can set that you know, using an environment variable. So I'm just gonna call that very quickly here. And then I have also this completion function and notice that I'm using GPT 3.5 Turbo 1106. You can take a look at the documentation from OpenAI to find out which are the models that are supported, which one of those actually support function calling. And these other things are very common for calling these OpenAI APIs and models. So you can see here that this utility function is basically just useful for retrieving the message that we get from these responses from these models. This is just a dummy function. I wanted to simplify the example a bit. So instead of calling an actual weather API, I'll just call this function and this function will serve as a tool. So this function in particular gets the current weather and the unit I'm using here as default is Fahrenheit. So you can see the description of the function here, get the current weather in a given location and the weather contains these parameters, location, temperature, unit. So when you call this function, you're gonna get this return and it's gonna dump it on a JSON right here. 
So let's define the functions. So again, functions, you can think of them as tools. And one of our tools is this get current weather. And we need to define this interface to the model, right? We need to provide that context for the model. So now when the model sees a request about location, right? let's say that is in the context of a conversational assistant or a conversational agent, then the model can use this function information to determine what are the type of parameters that it needs to extract. So now once we have those parameters defined, the parameters could be location, it could also be unit. So those are kind of important parts of this particular function. So let's say someone was to say, give me the weather in San Francisco, give me the weather in Boston or London. What that API call will do is once you have provided this tooling and this defined functions here, once you have defined those functions here, the model will use that context, right? will use that information to send you back the specific bits that are important for this particular API call. And it will look at location and it will look at unit and it will determine that based on those descriptions that you have provided and the types as well. So it really is important to spend time defining your descriptions because those are gonna help the model or aid the model to understand what you want to achieve. So this messages list is just basically how we typically call a model. So this is just an example. So we're using user role here and then contents is just asking a question. So what is the weather like in London? So it's a very simple example. It's not, you know, a full blown conversational agent yet, um, but we can test that out right away. So we can say get completion. And remember we defined that get completion function at the top. So we can get a response and we can call that function right away. And you can see what the model returns for you here. So it says function call is equal none, right? And then it says tool calls is equal this. So now it seems to be calling a tool. And then it has this additional information here that's passed as well. And you can see that it's providing arguments. When you define these functions, right? What the model sends back to you as a response is this argument, right? These arguments are what you have defined in that function. So it will look for specific information. So now when I said, what is weather like in London? It will look at this, right? So it will send this kind of information, which is related to the place, which is London here. And then by default, it will use Celsius. The model kind of uses its knowledge as well to define the unit in this case, because the unit wasn't really explicitly specified. So we are kind of leveraging also the intelligence of this particular language model. And we have other details here, but those are the bits that really matter, right? And you get that in a JSON object or format that you can then pass to your dummy function. So we're gonna pass that as an object to our dummy function here, and you will see how we're gonna get that information eventually, which we can also pass back to the model if we really wanted to. So we can get that information, we can extract that, and we just say args and just look at the arguments part of this and then just load that JSON that loads. Um, and now we can pass those arguments right back to our dummy function. So now our dummy function now sees that information, it's gonna take that and return back some information. And it has already that information, right, pertaining to, to that location, so which is this temperature. Everything is fixed here, but this could be an actual API. We can also customize the way the function calling works. So you can control the function calling behavior using the OpenAI APIs. So let's say we were interested in designing this function calling functionality in the context of a LLM powered conversational agent. Your solution should then know what function to call or if it needs to be called at all. So let's try a simple example of a greeting message. So let's say we had this bot that we were building or this assistant. And for now, we are using a very simple message that we're passing to the model. So this one is, hello, how are you? It's a simple greet. And now that we have these tools that we have defined, what we would like is, so every time we call this model or call this API, right? We want that API to determine whether it needs to call a function right? So that's something that we need to be able to customize because we don't want to force the function call if it's not needed. So in this case, for instance, if we're doing greeting, 
that doesn't really require a function calling because our tools is more about the, the weather information. So let's do something like this. Let's get the completion. You can see that we pass the message and we pass the tools. And this model return, hello, I'm here. I'm ready to assist you. How can I help you today? And you can see that it passes the assistant role. So no function calls, no tool calls were done here. This is expected. So let's say we want to specify the behavior you want from function calling, which is desired to control the behavior of this conversational system. So by default, the model decides on its own whether to call a function and which function to call. So this is the default mode, right? This is achieved by setting tool choice to auto, which is the default setting. So when you do a call like this, basically you're saying tool choice is equal auto, but we can explicitly define that, right? So we are not expecting a different answer. I'm just showing you here how you can explicitly define that behavior. So you can see that we get the same response, right? Nothing changed. So let's set tool choice to known, which forces the model to not use any of the functions provided. So the difference between this and this is that auto is left up to the system to decide. Here we are telling it not to use any of the functions provided. So I can expect the same output as what the other ones previously gave me. This is just a way to kind of control for that behavior that you get from function calling, right? That's what we're trying to do here. Let's now use a different example. So now that we have done the greeting, we ask the model or a user ask the model, what's the weather like in London? So how do we deal with this scenario? In this case, because we have this weather API, Ideally, this model or this call should look at those function, right? Those tools that we have provided and decide, okay, there is a function that's related to weather, right? Then I need to use this function, right? It needs to be able to decide that. So if we say tool choice is equal none, regardless of whether we have provided this relevant context for that function, it will still give you some output and the output will be, again, it will say, I will check the current weather in London for you, but it won't do any tool call and it won't do any function call. So that means you have forced this model to just say something else, right? So it has done that for you. It wasn't able to output the arguments as we got with the previous one because it's not calling any of those functions that you have specified before. So you can also force the model to choose a function if that's the behavior you want in your application. So there are different scenarios that you might have, and it's good to have that level of customization with a feature like this. So when you're building agent systems, right, the agent will be able to use the function calling capabilities of the API to decide whether it needs to call a tool. I find them to be very useful when I'm building these conversational agents. So let's define another example here. We have, again, a user role. What's the weather like in London? And then what we can do is we can pass the tool choice with something like this, right? So we give it the actual function and we have defined that here. And once we call it like this, you can see that now it does return these arguments, right? You can see under tool calls, it has this additional information that's more related to tool call. And it gives you this additional information, which is the arguments. And it says, okay, I found something about location. And I think it the way it did use the unit Celsius is basically what it has in memory. So that's really useful because you're also using the reasoning and knowledge capabilities of the system to load those arguments for you. So we get that and then we have obviously the function name here. And now that we have that information, we can utilize it in different ways. But what I'm gonna show you here as well is I'm gonna show you how this API right, can also support parallel function calling. So let's say we were asking about the weather in two different places, for instance. So here the request is, what's the weather like in London and Belmopan in the coming days? So once we define it like that, and we can call the model now, you can see that now it gives us two arguments. It gives us one argument for one location, which is London, and then it gives us the arguments for the other location. So it can do this in parallel, which is really neat because sometimes it will be various locations, right? It'll be in this case, because we're talking about weather, but it may be useful you know, to do this in parallel because it may be useful to call multiple functions in one single turn, just for efficiency sake. So we can see that the response above contains information from the function calls for the two locations query. That's what we wanted to achieve.
something neat that we can also do with function calling using the OpenAI APIs is this function caller response for the model feedback. So when you call this function, right, when you use the function calling with the APIs, it gives you these arguments. So ideally what you wanna do is use those arguments or pass those arguments to your API, make that call, and then that API will return back some information which you can then feed back to your model. How do you do that? So this example covers exactly that. Um, and in this case, again, I'm using what's the weather like in Boston as the example. So, so far we have passed the messages, we have called the model, we pass the messages here, we tell it the tools and the tool choice uh, set to auto, and then we load the information that we're getting from that model here, we dump it into a JSON, and then we extract certain information from it, we extract the actual content. And now that we have this assistant message content, what we can do is we can then append it to messages. So let me, let me share this. So I'm gonna load this, I'm gonna, show you these messages and then what I'll do is I'll just print out the messages just to show you what's the start of those messages at this point. So you can see here that we have the first uh, question, the first query which is what's the weather like in London and then we have like the arguments as well that we got from the function calling itself. So we have this assistant role and then we have these tool calls which involves information that we got from the function call. What we can do is we can append the results of the current of the get current weather function and pass it back to the model using a tool role. So we're gonna call our dummy function. We're gonna take messages and just we're just gonna pass what's in tool calls, arguments, and it's exactly this part, right? Boston MA. So that's what we passed. Once we get that weather information, um, assuming this is just an API call against just a dummy function, then we can go back to messages, then append back that content, right? So we already have information about the stuff here in messages, right? About the, the original query and all the other stuff as well. We're also appending what we get from the dummy function and we're just passing that back. Um, and this is how you typically would do it, right? So we have the name here, we just give it a name and that is what messages would contain. So I'll just show you again here what messages contain after running that piece of code and you can see the difference. So we still have the standard first bit here that I showed you at the top. And now we have this additional information, which is this object here that we're passing, right? You can see that it's the name is get current weather. It's just the name of the, of the function. And then we pass it the information that we got from the dummy function, which is the content itself. So once we pass everything and package it like this, we can then provide that as a feedback to the model. So now the final response is what we will get. Now we'll call the model again with this entire message list. And we say tool tools, obviously, because we have a set of tools. Um, and then we just say final response. Then final response is exactly right here, what you see. The current temperature in Boston MA is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So what all we did here was we gave the model some more information and context, which we gathered from the dummy function, right? Which are the actual temperatures and information about location and so forth. And then we pass that back as part of the call. And then the model has all that context now that it can use and can now generate a more relevant response. So the current temperature in Boston MA is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's it for function calling. That's basically an overview of the function calling capabilities using the OpenAI APIs. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying these technical lessons. And I'll see you in the next one.